As a child I was enrolled in a Washington DC private school, so kids of politicians, diplomats, lawyers, doctors etc. The school charged an insane amount for tuition, expected parents to pay thousands extra in fees to nations, and took the kids on their choice of four, two week trips, art in Europe, skiing in New Hampshire, scuba diving and biology in Australia, every year that cost tens of thousands. One girl's mom bought a dark room and camera equipment for the school, so her daughter could learn photography. These parents and their kids were beyond entitled. My parents could afford my tuition, but that was a stretch for them, so we weren't viewed as being especially valuable to the school. My school was taking each grade on a three day trip that they got us psyched up for all year. The teacher asked each child to list their five top choices for roommates. The week before the trip my mom got a call from the principal. I was nosy, so I picked up too and listened in on the conversation. Basically, she said, well, none of the kids want your daughter in their cabin. They don't like her. We suggested that it would be a nice thing to do, but the parents didn't think their children should be forced to be with someone they disliked. We don't have enough cabins to put her in one by herself, so you should just keep her home. I was devastated. Nine years old, completely heartbroken, in tears. They didn't want their children to be uncomfortable. But it's okay for any 9 year old girl to know that no one likes her and her school doesn't care how she feels. I refused to go back to school. I was so ashamed. I felt shattered and stupid and worthless. That was the beginning of a downslide into depression. I had been told by those kids for years that I was worthless, stupid, ugly and one year I did a report on being adopted and let me tell you the kids had a field day with that. But the realization that not one single person was in my corner, not even the teachers, it just broke me. I believed them all. I was worthless. At age 12 my parents put me in a residential hospital school for kids with severe depression. I'm now 35 and I have a good life, wonderful friends, great kids, and I foster all kinds of abandoned and unwanted animals. Life is good, I'm loved, and I'm happy, but I still get choked up thinking back to that phone call. F those bratty kids and their entitled parents. I got slut shamed and made to feel like trash by Mormon fiance's mom. It's important to note that I'm 30 now, so this happened when I was still in high school. So I met this guy when I was 16, and we started dating. Fast forward 2 years and we are both out of high school and engaged, looking back on it, an 18 year old has no business being engaged. Anyway, my then fiance had been raised Mormon and wanted me to convert to the religion as that was what was expected by me and everyone in his big Mormon family. So I went through all the lessons and got baptized in the church, that part is important. His family was Air Force, and so they moved around a lot, so shortly after he proposed his family moved to Colorado, so the relationship became long distance. That summer when he came to visit, things got hot and heavy, and we ended up losing our virginity to each other. I had been raised to save myself for marriage, and figured since I was engaged to this guy, who at the time, was the love of my life, it was basically the same thing, big mistake. So a few days later, he gets typical Mormon guilt and decides to tell both his parents and his bishop at church. Next thing I know, my mom gets a call from fiancé's mother telling her that I'm no longer welcome at their home. When my mom asked why, she was told that Jezebels and harlots aren't welcome in their house of the Lord because my son would have never been tempted or agreed to any of this if your daughter wasn't such a temptress. At this point my mom goes off on her, telling her that she hates to break it to her, but it takes two to tango, and she might wanna have a conversation with her son as he was more than capable of making that decision on his own as we are both 18. His mother then hangs up in my mom's face, and for the next two weeks, proceeds to make a point to call our house at least twice a day leaving messages on our answering machine about how much of a slut I am, how God hates me, and I should be ashamed of myself. At this point, I honestly had no experience in handling any of this and would be reduced to tears on the daily. From a religious perspective, I understand the value of chastity before marriage, but when you resort to acts of harassment and slander is beyond my comprehension even to this day. You might be asking what consequences befell my fiancé during all of this. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. He told his parents and they forgave him and told him 
that he was a victim and not responsible. His bishop, the Mormon equivalent of a pastor, told him to ask God for forgiveness and read his scriptures daily. To make matters worse, his mother decides to make a phone call to the bishop at my church and tell him everything that happened. Next thing I know, I'm getting pulled into his office and told that my sin was second only to murder and that God and his grace have abandoned me. I was beside myself in tears. Furthermore, I was told that I was no longer allowed to teach Sunday school and I wasn't permitted to sit with anyone during the sermon. That's right, I was made to sit by myself and separate from everyone just to drive the point home that I wasn't worthy to sit with everyone else. The whole experience was absolutely horrific and caused me a lot of trauma that I had to work through as a result. His mother still maintains to this day that I'm the worst person on the face of the planet and that her son is a saint. Needless to say, we broke off our engagement and went our separate ways. Update on aftermath. After I stopped going to sacrament or the ward in general, the Mormon missionaries would routinely sit outside my house waiting for either me or my mom to get home. When I moved to a new city, they continued to sit outside my mom's house to ask me where I was. Somehow they found out where I had moved, transferred my records to that ward and the harassment continued. It took 5 years and a cease and desist letter from a lawyer to get them to leave me alone and remove my name from church records. I'm not religious at all anymore. You don't have to have religion to be a good person and truth be told, those that claim religion tend to be the worst garbage people I've ever met. They hide behind theology as a justification for treating people like crap. So yeah, after going to massive amounts of therapy to reprogram my brain out of thinking I was nothing but trash, I left all organized religion and never looked back. Since then, now at 30, I have spent every day since then rebuilding everything that he broke. And I refuse to ever be treated like that by anyone ever again. About 6 months ago, I was waiting my turn to play when a couple times I could hear him complain to his dad about how the graphics or something are bad and how he didn't like the controllers and the TV is too big or something and yada yada. I had hoped I wouldn't be against him and I was right. For the first round. Turns out the other guy left and he automatically won. This got him incredibly overconfident. He started talking crap real quick. Ek entitled kid. Ed entitled dad. C commentator. BM building manager. Ek you're going down. I'm gonna beat you. I scared the other guy away. I'm gonna beat the hell out of you. I don't know if you care, but the Ek was about 11 to 12. Me okay buddy. Good luck. Ek I don't need luck. I'm the best. The match proceeds, and we get to the game. He must have not been paying attention to who I picked. We get there, and he unplugs my F9 controller. Me what the hell. Ek I don't like that you played that pink thing. Stop you are going to switch. Me Jigglypuff? Ek yes. Stop we're going to switch. He proceeded to just spam one attack with Mario and the taunt, while we sat there. See why did you unplug this controller? Ek I don't like the jiggy whatever that he is using. See why? He can play who he wants. Ek I don't like it okay. My dad will kick you all out. See what? Ed did you say something bad to my son? See what no I. Ek yes he did dad. Kick him out. Ed alright. Ed proceed to call the actual fine building manager. The manager walks in to see what all the ruckus is. Ek he played a character I don't like. Every in the room started bursting out laughing. Ed that's it. You're all going to get kicked out. You all are going to hell. BM shut up. You have to leave right now. Get out edition. Guess she actually knew him. They leave but not without shouting a bunch of racial homophobic slurs at random people in the crowd, including me. Turns out that the Ek actually stole one of the little prize things you get. We never got it back. We don't know what happened, but they were blacklisted from hosting events at that place and joining events. It was a fun event. And I did win, so that was kinda cool. M, my mother. Mod, manager on duty. Me, embarrassed teen. Okay so this is about a couple weeks ago. So about a month I got a new job at a chain grocery store. The store is 5 minutes from my house and I generally work most weekdays on the evenings, and any time Saturday and Sunday. Why is this relevant? No cool mayo. So I'm working as a checker. 
cashier, and I see her in my line. Now as some of you may know, you legally cannot check out family members, because they don't want you to be tempted to give extra money from your register. So as I'm checking someone else out, I see her in my line and I immediately say, while working, yes bad etiquette, I know, you cannot be in my line mother. And she goes, shush I already have my stuff down, focus on your customer. And I'm like yeah okay whatever I'll just have to keep reiterating it. So my customer goes, and she's up next, and I tell her repeatedly I cannot check you out because you're family. She repeatedly tells me her stuff is on the conveyor and at him her daughter multiple times. I refuse to even touch her items and I stand there saying the same thing over and over. I'm sorry, I can't check you out. So she goes fine then, I want to speak to the manager. I was shook. Lmao. Like I knew she was petty but what. So I look her in the eye, pick up the phone, at our store we have phones leading through the store, and ring to customer service, where the mod stays, they handle lotto tickets, and like selling tobacco and baby products etc. Me, this lady would like to speak to the manager, MOD, okay, be there in a second. So we wait a minute, and she comes over, and she's like how, can I help you mom? And my mother immediately pops off, M, she will not check me out. I already have my stuff on the conveyor, there's literally 5 other cashiers to BTW, and this is my daughter. She needs to check me out blah blah blah. MOD, looks at me, me, yep that's my mother. MOD, yes she cannot check you out as that's against the law. However, I can check you out myself. MOD proceeds to log me out of my register, log herself in, and then check my mother out. The entire time, I kid you not, M is going shh my daughter this is rude I can't believe this blah blah blah. And I just about die of embarrassment. Eventually M leaves and my MOD goes back to customer service. I would have been fine, but according to someone else in my shift that overheard it, the MOD was talking about the situation to someone else, and was going I can't believe Jay's mother made her call the manager. Bruh, never have I ever wanted to quit so badly. Thank you for watching, slap that like button and comment your opinion on these stories below. I'm waiting, write that comment, seriously. Have you written it yet? If you don't comment, you make a bunny cry somewhere. You're not that kind of person, I know. Anyways, peace out, and catch you tomorrow.